Hey, good morning, church. Glad to see everybody this morning. I hope this video is finding you all doing very well. And today, being Palm Sunday, and quite the unique Palm Sunday, I would like to encourage you this week. This week, as we prepare for Holy Week, I hope to offer you some reassurance as we enter another week that what appears to be a prolonged season of social distancing. During these uncertain times, though, it's comforting to remind ourselves that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. With today being Palm Sunday, it marks the beginning of what we call Holy Week. And I encourage you at this time to take full advantage of this very unusual moment in time. To remember, along with me, one of God's most beautiful names, Emmanuel, God with us. I know, although Emmanuel takes us back to the Christmas story, I believe it's very appropriate in these uncertain days as well. God is with us in the midst of our fears and our anxieties, our frustrations and our anger as we wrestle with the effects of this pandemic. We wrestle with the fact that we're losing loved ones. We wrestle with the fact that people are ill. We wrestle with the fact of what's happening to the economy. We wrestle with the fact that the way we're living life and we have anxiety over the fact of what this will all look like when it is over. Let's open up with prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, creator of all, we just thank you for this day. As we are here on Palm Sunday, getting ready to go through the Passion Week. Father, there are so many people out there that are full of anxiety and full of hurt and anger. There are so many people out there that are ill. There are so many people out there that are losing loved ones over the COVID-19. And Father, we just lift them all up to you. We lift up the people that are on the front lines. We lift up the doctors and the nurses and the medical staffs that are out there fighting for these people's lives. We lift up our police forces. We lift up our fire departments. We lift up the prison guards that are in the line of this disease. Father, there's so many people that we can lift up. We can't forget the cashiers and the people that are keeping the shelves stocked for us so that we do not go hungry. Father, as we go on, we lift up those people that are on our prayer list. Father, I pray for each and every one that is listed, and I lift them up to you, Father, the great physician. Father, we continue to thank you for your son. We continue to thank you for the love that he had way before we knew him. The love that he had on that cross. The pain and the suffering, the beatings. Father, it's because of him we have that hope. It's because of the blood that was shed. The atonement through him. Father, we thank you. We can never repay you other than with our love. Father, as we go on today, as we approach this week, as we approach our Savior, as we read in your word, being crucified, dead and buried, allow us to have that hope, the rejoice of that tomb being empty. Father, we understand that our churches are empty today, but Father, let us be blessed in knowing that that tomb will always remain empty because our Jesus lives. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Hey, as we continue on today with Palm Sunday, of course, the scripture I was going with was Matthew 21, 8 through 11. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while other Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them, those that followed, shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. It was the palm branches that made this day unique. And then again, it wasn't. For centuries, the church has observed this day as being the first day of Holy Week, Palm Sunday. 
Of course, because of the palm branches and the cloaks, the people spread out before Jesus and entered Jerusalem. The gospel writers describe the crowds gathered lining the roads in front of our Savior, overflowing with excitement as he slowly rode into the city. As he made his way one step at a time on that donkey, they were kind of making a, a um, runner or possibly a carpet, if you would, by laying down the palm branches and the cloaks. This path of a loving welcome to Israel's long-awaited Savior. But according to the Pharisees, this was a problem. You see, the Pharisees wanted Jesus to stop the people. The Pharisees wanted Jesus to stop the people from yelling, Hosanna, what they were yelling. The real problem, though, was actually the Pharisees. They were unable to see the uniqueness of Jesus. Today, as we prepare for Holy Week in a very unique way, a way that I hope none of us have to ever witness again. I want to look at our Lord's uniqueness. First off, what's your definition of uniqueness? If we look at the dictionary, the words rare, uncommon, strange, odd, and unusual come to mind. If you listen to our worldview culture today, you will find that people are unique when they have great accomplishments or they have great accumulation or they have great applause on the stage. You see, you do your own thing on the stage, accumulate more stuff, become somebody per important, the average person will stand up and take note. But what really makes somebody unique? If we look at it, the religious answer would be, we are created in the image of God. Well, in reality, that gives us identity. It doesn't make us unique because all of mankind is created in the image of God. The fact of uniqueness is bound up in the fact that we are individually loved and cared for by God who created that. Now that makes us very unique. We are children of God. He has given us our fingerprints. He's given us our eye prints. He's given us our very own DNA that nobody else matches. No one else in the universe ever will match you, the one that God created. The question then becomes, how much more unique can you get? The answer is bound up in the model God, the creator, would have us pattern ourselves after. Of course, that being his son, Jesus Christ. And I want to take a few minutes to recognize some of his uniqueness. Consider the pre-incarnate existence. Jesus didn't come to being in that manger. Jesus existed in eternity with the Father. He was there before time and space. No one else can claim that. Let's consider the virgin birth. Of course, today there are plenty of single moms uh, but no virgins. Jesus was born of a virgin. No one else can ever make that claim. The sacrificial atonement. Jesus' death on that cross was just not an unfair treatment of an angry Roman or an angry Jewish mob. It was chosen before the foundation of the world for Jesus to die for our sins. No one else can make that claim. No one else can bring us to God. How about his resurrection? The dead man, after he was taken off of that cross, was placed in that tomb. And just as scripture said, on the third day, he rose again and he walked. Plenty of medical miracles today, we see people being revived after they had died, but not one who didn't eventually die. Jesus' resurrection was permanent. No one else can make that claim. How about his ascension? When the time came, Jesus simply left this earth, and he went to be on the right hand of his Father in heaven. He never died. No one else can make that claim. 
If there is any doubt of the uniqueness of Jesus Christ, there's never been anyone like Jesus. And to top it all off, the most startling uniqueness is that he loves us and he's coming back for us. And he wants us to be with him. And he wants us to grow, to be like him. James 1, 18 says, He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits for all he created. For those who have, been, who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they read what James is saying here, that is, we recognize the uniqueness of Christ because he is growing within us. Christ's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is growing within us. And if we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, we can grow in that nature. These are rather the distinguishing marks of our uniqueness in Christ. It's all about him and what he does in our lives that makes us like him. Nothing has to do with us. To sum up Christ's uniqueness, we only need to look at the cross. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sins and his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. The only reason God sent his son to die on the cross is because there was no other way to remove the guilt of sin and to save the souls of mankind whom he created. There was no other way. And I know if there was another way, God would have designed a way. It is at the cross we see that God's love and his justice is beautifully blended together. Just God commanded that the punishment of sin in is death. Romans 6.23 reminds us of that. A sacrifice must be offered for the atonement of our sins. See, we are the real offenders. It's because of our sin life. And every one of us deserve to die. We don't deserve to be forgiven. It's only because of Jesus Christ that our sinful lives can be cleansed. It's because of the blood that he shed for each and, of, each and every one of us. Instead of that, God loved us so much. He didn't want to take the punishment. Therefore, he sent his son. He sent his son to take our place on the cross, to die on our behalf. So the justice requirement that God had was fulfilled by Christ. The, cro the cross is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. The cross demonstrates the true uniqueness of Christ. The, the, cro the cross of Christ, uh, we have no connection with our old sin or with life sinning today. By the power of the risen Savior, now we have to separate ourselves from the sinful life and dedicate ourselves to righteousness. Now the indwelling Holy Spirit enables us to live a victorious Christian life. We have to be open, we have to be willing to allow the Spirit to guide us. Sin is not only a matter of guilt and power in our lives, but also the deadliest poison which affects our personalities. Sin is a sickness, and the only antidote is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. His life laid down in death and taken up in resurrection cleanses and purifies and heals our spirit. So as I close on this Palm Sunday, I pray that even during this very unique time, that we are, able, that we are not able to meet under the same roof, where you are at, you're still meeting around the Lord's table. I pray that you're examining yourself. I pray that you're still taking communion. Today is a good time to look over the uniqueness of Christ that grows in true believers. See, it's kind of a self-test to see our growth. I also want to ask you, have you received this great salvation that brings deliverance from the penalty, penalty 
the power of the poison of sin? Until you do, you are lost. For this is the only standard that God accepts, and you can receive this salvation by only trusting Jesus, by only trusting Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Being born again, being baptized in that watery grave and coming out a new person in the name of Jesus Christ. Come today to repentance to the cross. By the act of faith, make Christ of the cross central in all of your relationships, in your entire life. Only then you will know the healing that flows from a place called Calvary. Only then will you know the true meaning of the name Emmanuel, God with us. Our Savior, as we look at this week coming, and we know the story, We've all read our Bibles. We know Sunday's coming. We know there will be a risen Savior. We know what will happen throughout the week. We know the torture that our Savior goes for. He goes through such torture. It's because of our sin. Father God, Father, we just thank you for the Savior. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to this earth. He came to this earth and walked in our footsteps. He came to this earth and felt the pain and the suffering. He saw the lost. He saw those that were hurting. Father, we just pray that we can look through your eyes. That we can see those around us that are lost, that are hurting, that are in need of a Savior. Father, it's all because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus that we're alive. It's all because of Jesus that we have hope to live. That we have that hope to live eternally with you. Father, it's all because of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we praise you. Because of Jesus. In his name. Amen.